Hi, my name is Willy Kurtz. I'm an electronics technician at the Astronomical Observatory in Cape Town since 1987 and an amateur astronomer for about three decades. So our outreach department has asked me to produce a video giving some pointers on how to do star trail photography. Uh, there are numerous videos out there on YouTube and other places going into all sorts of detail of every aspect and I'm encouraging you to go and watch them especially if you need in more information on certain aspects and uh, regard this video as a sort of an overview on how to get started. As far as equipment goes, you would definitely need a camera. The only requirement of the camera that is it's got to be able to go onto manual and it's got to be capable of long exposures. So, I mean, I did my first time lapses with something like this back in the day and this has got manual which made that possible and this thing could expose up to 15 seconds. Of course, these days our best cameras are actually our own cell phones and I'll show you a bit towards the end on how to do starter photography using a cell phone. Next, you would need a tripod, sturdy tripod definitely. Something like this is ideal. These Gorilla Pods also work. You can even get these tiny little ones. They, they just need to be sturdy because for the duration of the shot, the, the camera has got to be kept perfectly still. Uh, if you don't have a tripod and you want to improvise a bean bag or a sand bag, just a plastic bag or any bag that you fill with sand will, will do the trick. A cable release is definitely necessary. Now you get these simple models um, and by the, using the right camera settings you can just you, you can use one of these and they can actually lock. Uh, there are fancier intervalometers that can do all sorts of timings and stuff. You don't really need this for star trails. Uh, and without their battery, these also actually work as a cable release. As far as lenses go, you need a lens that's preferably a fast lens. That means a small, a small F number, um, like this so-called Nifty 50 lens, um, 50 millimeter F 1.8. It's got a fair aperture in uh, photography. The smaller the F number, the bigger the aperture of the lens and so-called faster lens. Make sure your battery is fully charged. A spare battery can never hurt, especially in the felt and if you run out of battery. Also make sure your memory card is, uh, has got enough space to take a few hundred pictures. And then you can go. So as far as camera settings go, so I would recommend the first thing you do is you determine what sort of angle you want to shoot at. Um, so in photography, the bigger the number, the more you zoomed in. So in this case, we want to go as wide angle as possible. So in this case, an 18 millimeter will give you the possible widest angle on the, on the night sky. And then the first thing you would do is to focus. Uh, now there are different ways of focusing and um, if you put your camera on autofocus and if there's a moon around um, then then it is quite easy to get the moon as your target and then you focus on the moon and then you immediately switch to manual and then just be very careful not to disturb the lens after that another popular focusing method is the so-called live view method so here you go on to the video mode and um, then by using the zoom function on your camera, you can zoom right in. So you find a bright star in the sky, and then you, and then you focus manually until you get the star the sharpest. And of course, then you must still be in manual mode. And that is another easy way of focusing. So if we look at the other settings, firstly go on to manual, and um, so the lens is now already on manual and already focused. The first thing to look at is ISO. Okay, so we try and push the ISO as high as possible to get good sky penetration. 6400 is good for if you've got a very dark site. If you've got more light pollution, you would probably drop that down a little. Next thing is aperture. In photography, the bigger the number, the less light is let in. 
So you actually want to dial this to as small a number as possible with now the lens being wide open. Next thing is uh, exposure time. As far as exposure is concerned, there are different ways. There's basically two ways of looking at it. The one is you're going for bulb, which means that as long as the, uh, as the shutter is pushed in, the lens stays open. So you'll be exposing for all that time. And people can expose up to about 30 minutes or so. This, of course, will depend on what light pollution is around and all sorts of other factors. So there is a limit to how long you can do this. Of course, the shot will be overexposed now. Um, the uh, a more common method is to actually go for a number of shorter exposures. Now, again, here you've got to plan a little bit ahead. And if you want to also use the shots to do a time lapse, for instance, then you must apply the 500 rule so you don't get trailing. <clears throat> if you're only going to do star trials, then you, you don't need to really worry. Um, and you can actually go much longer between exposures. Again, depending on circumstances, how much light is around, etc., etc. Okay, so if we install our cable release... So the cable release goes in there and now every time we push the shutter the camera is exposing. In this case this exposure time was 10 seconds. Of course it will be on the tripod when you do this. And the picture will read out. Will read out. Of course you are now going to take a series of pictures and therefore you must take the shutter control onto continuous shooting. I'm just going to push the time a bit down just to show you let's just make that four seconds for now just for, for demonstration so now if I hold the the shutter in and I lock it you will see it'll take a picture and it'll just keep going and this is basically how you will be shooting now at night if your camera has got image stabilization you must switch that off um, and then another thing to switch off is your long exposure reduction. Uh, make sure that is off. If it's on, it will take a similar exposure between each of your shots. One thing you also need to do is do some planning of your shots. If you just think about it, when you're facing west or east, then the star trails would be roughly straight, depending on the wide angle of the lens, obviously, and the angle at which the star trails will meet the horizon is the same as your latitude so that gives you a sort of interesting effect there in the southern hemisphere facing south of course gives you circles around the pole or the the so-called south celestial pole so an interesting thing is to make the pole coincide with something interesting like a windmill or a church tower or something like that and of course for that you need to know where the south celestial pole is in the sky the southern hemisphere we don't have a pole star or polaris so therefore you need different methods you can find on the internet uh, using the southern cross and its pointer stars etc etc the next thing you need to think about is for how long you want to take pictures for considering that the sky turns 15 degrees an hour that'll give you a trail of a certain length so if you really want nice long trails you need to go for at least an hour or more the other thing to think about is what time of year you want to shoot there, of course, are very bright parts of the sky. In the winter, the center of the galaxy is around, which is quite nice and bright. In summer, of course, you have the bright constellations of Orion and Canis Major. And, in, in, of course, in winter, the Scorpius and th that area. Always make sure that there's something interesting on the horizon to include in your pictures. Otherwise, the pictures may look pretty bland. It gives you a nice sense for scale and also gives your eye something interesting to look at. So going out and taking your pictures, as we said, 15 degrees an hour, aim your camera, set up your tripod, make sure it is protected from wind. I always like to put my tripod as low as possible if I can help it, if it's a windy place, and then start exposure. If you're in a safe area, you can leave your camera and come back after an hour or more. Of course, that's not always possible everywhere, otherwise your camera won't be there when you return. If you come back and your battery has lasted all the time, then go ahead and take a few dark exposures. 
Now dark exposures, as we said before, you leave the settings untouched and you put your lens cover over and you take similar exposures than what you've just done. The idea here is to do those exposures at the same temperature of your sensor and at the same settings and that will be used for post-processing. In part two we'll show the post-processing and also a cell phone example.